on the United States. One final preparation match for both teams before World Cup qualifying begins in October. The stars are out tonight. We are in Rochester, New York here tonight at Salem Stadium, an international friendly one last time for players to impress a manager. The United States taking on Mexico, and it's important because of this. Upcoming, the 2014 CONCACAF Women's Championship. And welcome in, everybody. I'm Glenn Davis. Alongside me is former U.S. national team legend in midfield, Julie Foudy. And tonight, one more opportunity for players to impress. So what are you looking for individually from players and then collectively from the U.S. national team? Well, as you mentioned, Glenn, last chance. And Jillian Ellis is taking a look. She's going with some players. She needs to see to make that decision. One being Amy Rodriguez. Can she have that continued production we've seen with her professional team? And boy, what a year she had for Kansas City. 16 goals this year just coming back from having a baby last year to lead Kansas City to the title so she, can she convert as well in that lone forward position for the United States tonight she'll also be looking that back line can they not only be sound defensively but especially at that outside back position can they be sound offensively and help them build possession and then finally some resume building opportunities who are the game changers in this game and can they be productive especially those on the bubble let's take a look at the united states lineup under jill ellis tonight she makes four changes four changes and the one in the middle you're going to see mega rapino going back into that attacking central midfield position tobin heath one of those players on the outside jillian ellis wants to see be a game changer tonight sydney larue on the other side now for Mexico, they've got Veronica Perez, one of the holdovers, and you won't forget her because remember back in 2010 World Cup qualifying, she scored on this header, which would give Mexico a 2-1 win, their only win over the United States, and forced the U.S. into a home-and-home -home series against Italy. They would ultimately qualify. But tonight, Veronica Perez will lead the way for Mexico under their manager, Leo Cuellar, and they make two changes tonight, Julie. Two changes, but still staying in that 4-4-2, the same lineup that the United States had away with five nights ago when they beat them 8-0. Veronica Perez, the one you just talked about, they are a little bit scarred still from that game four years ago that almost knocked them out of the World Cup. But also look on the other side, Mayor, another creative midfielder. We lay out for the national anthem of Mexico.
Stay with us in Rochester when we come back. Opening kickoff from Salem Stadium, the United States getting set to take on Mexico. And U.S. fans out in fine fashion here tonight. The United States getting set to take on Mexico, and it is game on here at Salem Stadium in Rochester, New York. Right up the top, it's direct. It's to Sidney LaRue. And the first touch of the game for the goalkeeper for Mexico, Cecilia Santiago, your referee tonight, Maria Bobois. The United States in red, Mexico in green. Glenn Davis alongside Julie Fatty. It's off and running here. Conditions. Uh, in the 40s here tonight, so nice and cool, Julie, for a very important game for two teams. Skies opened up to blue skies at the end of the evening. It's turned out very nice. A lot of eyes tonight on Tobin Heath getting the start for the United States. Sauerbrunn's going to drive this one over the halfway line and headed right back in by Ron Hell. Ron Hell tonight in her 43rd appearance for Mexico. We'll knock it forward again. So these teams played six days ago in Sandy, Utah, at Rio Tinto Stadium. The U.S. dominating 8-0 performance. And it looks like, uh, again, Mexico is going to play a, 
higher pressing game. LaRue now. Rodriguez is in the box. And Santiago does well to save it. And already in the first two minutes, the U.S., one of the keys they've been talking about a lot is starting strong. And you can see they're doing that. They're pressing high defensively. Mexico gets the free kick here. Yeah, that's one thing she wanted. Jill Ellis wanted a bolder, stronger start here. And you could even say in Sandy, Utah, it was a bit of a slow start for the U.S. in that game. Sierra drives it forward. Mexican team has 11 Americans that are born and bred. A number of them play in the NWSL, play at the college level. Monica Alvarado getting a start tonight, gives it away. Shooting opportunity from long range from Carly Lloyd, who plays right here in this stadium in the NWSL for the Western New York Flash. Coach Jill Ellis, 48 years old, replaced Tom Sermani, has coached at every level of the game. Assistant in 2011 to Pia Sundhage, was also once the U.S. Director of Player Development and the head coach at UCLA. She has some background and some resume. And then Leo Quay are 60 years, 60 years old, or 60 years young maybe. 14 years in charge of the Mexican program since 78. It's taken them to two World Cups in 99 and 2011. Also to the quarterfinals of the Athens Olympics. Hope Solo, Becky Sauerbrunn now. Rapino has found space behind the Mexican midfield. Wow, almost picked out the run of Amy Rodriguez. So what a nice ball in that seam. That hole for Megan Rapino. That's where the United States is going to be looking to find her, right in that number 10 seam. And there's Amy Rodriguez of FC Kansas City, the NWSL winners. She had the two goals in the final against the Seattle Reign. Rodriguez cushions it down, Tobin Heath now. Artificial surface here at Salem Stadium. Rapino, Lloyd. Thought about the big switch, hesitated. Mexico has won it back now. Charlene Corral is number 20, getting a start tonight. So Marjic will clip this over the top. Not a bad idea. Back to Hope Solo, who calmly plays away from pressure. Kelly O'Hara. And the challenge, Glenn, for Mexico tonight, we could see it there as you had Corral, one player against about four Reds there. They got to get numbers around the ball because they're not going to beat the United States with their pace. They've got to do it creatively with combination and numbers and getting that midfield forward to help those front two. And some might say, why is Mexico coming out and playing so open again after what happened to them in Sandy, Utah? But the fact is, they will play open against most of CONCACAF in qualifying. So. This is another exercise for Leo Cuellar. Yeah, similar to the United States, their last look before they go into qualifiers. They may have wanted a deeper defending Mexico here tonight to practice breaking down a, a deeper team because that's what they're likely going to face in their qualifying group stage in October. LaRue over the top. Next summer, it's the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup in Canada. And already for Sydney LaRue in that left side. Three good looks. And that's where Mexico's back line really struggled in the game six days ago was the pace of Alex Morgan. And then when Sydney LaRue came in off the bench, she didn't start in that game. Her pace as well. Lloyd got up and won the header. Rodriguez back towards Lloyd. Holiday trying to break through. Got out. Good work from Klingenberg, who plays in the NWSL 
for the Houston Dash. Getting a start tonight in the right back position. Rapino now. Great distribution. Here's Tobin Heath. Heath towards the end line. And it'll be a free kick. Heath called for the foul there after the strong tackle from Paulina Solis tonight, getting her 13th cap for Mexico. Good look at Tobin Heath. And Spent some time in France with Paris Saint Germain. And that's what Jillian Ellis wants to see out of Heath is that end product. Can she get in that wide position, which is going to be so critical in these qualifiers with these teams bunkering in? Can she get in that wide position and get a cross in? There she gets called for the foul, but she's trying to get in behind. So what is her output from that wide position? Two-time gold medalist, member of the Portland Thorns. Rapino. Lloyd gets it wide. This is O'Hara joining in, and the one-two doesn't come off with Sidney LaRue. Eight minutes in the U.S. and Mexico tied at zero. Switch of play there from Holiday, who just dips the left shoulder and spears it to Christy Rampone. Rampone tonight in her 297th appearance for the United States. Amazing, isn't it? The longevity. 39 years old. Three-time gold medalist, four World Cups. Played at Monmouth College, and here she is on the ball. Playing like someone uh, half her age. <laughs> Stephanie Mayor. Rapino, good pressing play there. Leads for a chance here. And it's 1 0 United States. Answering the call is Amy Rodriguez, who picks up her 28th international goal for the U.S. Another one of the keys for the United States is the pressure defensively and immediately. And there it comes from Megan Rapino winning that ball with just a little toe poke. And Amy Rodriguez making sure outside of her right to finish that one off and punish Mexico for that defensive air. Played at USC, 27 years of age. Jamie Rodriguez tonight appearing for the U.S. for her 111th time. And Cecilia Santiago in goal for Mexico might have felt she could have maybe parried that away. But again, you brought out the pressing play. It's something that the coaches demanded tonight. And Mexico has to know that that's a tactic the United States is going to take. They're going to press with that front five, front six players. So they've got to be more careful. They did this in the last game as well. There's the Fallon. On O'Hara there, that was a good one. Kelly O'Hara converted into that left back position for the United States. Played every minute of the London Olympics. Sauerbrunn, the NWSL Defender of the Year. Outstanding in that final. For FC Kansas City, we were raving about her on that day. She was so impressive. And not just defensively. I love the way she can play out of the back as well offensively in set play. Here's Mayor. U.S. 27-1-1 all time. That one loss was in World Cup qualifying remarkably. Sent the U.S. into a third place game. They beat Costa Rica, which allowed them then to play in a playoff against Italy, which they got through and ended up at the World Cup. Mayor's cross is blocked. Good defending there to not allow the delivery. Again, it was O'Hara. Long throw towards the near post, and it was a dangerous throw. Almost picked out Corral.
Who spun off a defender. Here's Sauerbrunn now. Holiday switches it. Now Mexico working on their higher pressing game here. Klingenberg. And the U.S. showing the skill to get out of it. Well driven ball played wide there by Holiday. It has released O'Hara now, and she's got tons of runners in front of the ball here. LaRue, top of the box, will switch it towards Lloyd. Lloyd was on, but it was cut out by Mexico. Samarczyk, number nine, who plays at USC, and that's not a bad ball. Corral's going to get there first, or is she? Solo will pounce on it. But Mexico carving out. A very good chance here, 13 minutes in. Almost catching the United States four because they'd sent both outside backs. And Hope Solo actually hesitating, not sure if she can get there. You see her take that stutter step, almost didn't get there. Rampone, Klingenberg. This front four of Mexico is working very hard to make it difficult for the U.S. to get out of the back. Here's Sauerbrunn. Cushions it down beautifully. And she's found the space to carry it forward. Wise play from Becky Sauerbrunn. Rapino now. Big switch. Tobin Heath trying to get there. And it's last touched by Heath. It'll be a goal kick for Mexico. What? One of the things we've heard Jillian Ellis talk a lot about is the outside backs having to deal with the pressure of getting out and holding possession. Here you see it from Megan Klingenberg doing so well, and especially if Mexico is going to keep coming. Because once you clear that first line, there's some gaps and space in there, as we just saw with Sauerbrunn. Well, when we did our open tonight, that was one of your bullet points that you wanted to see here tonight. We had you put your uh, manager's hat on. <laughs> Scary. O'Hara goes back to Hope Solo. Florida got underneath that one. It's knocked straight up in the air into midfield. Rapino's there. And it'll be a free kick for the United States. Energetic first 15 minutes here for both teams. The U.S. a 1-0 lead. Again, it was six days ago in Sandy, Utah. The U.S. were 8-0 winners in that game. Hope Solo recording a record 72nd shutout for the U.S. Alex Morgan, two goals and three assists in that game. Abby Wambach had two. But... Mexico will get a free kick here now. No, it'll be a U.S. free kick. Rampone to Sauerbrunn. Sauerbrunn played at the University of Virginia. And here's Sauerbrunn again running it out of the back. That's a weapon she brings. Carly Lloyd now. The defeat of Rodriguez. Broken up by Alvarado. Still U.S. now. Rapino. Wonderful pass through the eye of a needle to Tobin Heath. Klingenberg getting forward there. So right there, Julie. Megan Klingenberg getting into the attack ahead of Tobin Heath. And, and because the outside wingers, Heath and Sidney LaRue are playing so high, it's essentially a 4-3-3 when they're attacking. It opens up that space for those outside backs to get forward. Begging for Klingenberg and O'Hara to jump in there. 
Rapino in a central role tonight to take the corner. She'll drive it towards the back post. It's sort of helped on by Santiago. Heath with a couple step overs tries to drive it in. It's ultimately cut out by Mexico. Still the U.S. in possession. Rapino. Got a good run from Klingenberg to pull a defender off her. Top of the box is Carly Lloyd now. And she'll get called for the foul. How about a bench tonight for the U.S.? That includes Alex Morgan, <laughs> Abby Wambach, Kristen Press, Heather O'Reilly, Julie Johnston, Crystal Dunn, and Ashlyn Harris. How many, how many countries would be begging for that? So look at Abby Wambach. Grew up in the Rochester area. Big feature in the local newspaper here today on Abby. And Alex Morgan. They're going to get some time tonight, I'm sure. Sarah Brunt, good powerful header, but uh, propelled herself off of Corral and gets called for the foul. Boy, she is an impressive center back. Bianca Sierra to take the set piece, plays for the Boston Breakers, clips it in, solo off her line, and easily will gather it in. Tobin Heath now pulling out on the left side, switching with LaRue, who's now on the right. Practice yesterday, uh, U.S. team very enthusiastic seem to be having a lot of fun winning 8-0 games it usually helps set that tone the u.s out shooting mexico in that game 25 to 8. Good look at Megan Klingenberg up close. Run hell. To Alvarado. Put her in trouble. Rodriguez trying to get there, and Santiago will clear it. Rapino. Heath. Tobin Heath tried to bring in LaRue. Oh, tremendous play from Klingenberg. Good pressing play in the right back position. Here's LaRue now. And LaRue wanted a corner. May have earned it, but it'll be a goal kick to Mexico now, 20 minutes in. Let's take a look at Megan Rapino and her role a little bit different tonight, Julie. In that attacking central midfield seam, here's the ball in. She's just unable to connect, but that's the seam they want to find her in because this is what happens is she can pull the she can pull the strings from that attacking central midfield position. And here on the defensive side, also doing the work with the assist on the Amy Rodriguez. Nice finish there. And a lot of mobility. You're seeing her on the left. You're seeing her on the right. She's on that front line. Sauerbrunn back to Hope Solo now, to Rampone. Rampone played three sports at Monmouth College in New Jersey. And as Julie mentioned, the mother of two. Boy, that is a beautifully laced ball from Lauren Holiday out wide. Tobin Heath now has got O'Hara to her left. Brings in O'Hara. Players in the box for the United States. Can't get the cross in, but the U.S. will get the corner now, 21 minutes in. The left back joining in the attack, to your point, Julie. And again, Holiday in that deeper seam, getting the ball, and with one firm pass, we're seeing that 40-yard 40, 40 driven ball switching the point of play. And the United States is out the other side, and this is what comes of it. Rapino to the back post, punched on by Santiago. 
And the U.S. will get another corner. Santiago, interesting story, only 19 years of age. The goalkeeper from Mexico at 16 and a half played in the 2011 World Cup for Mexico. You can see Mexico choosing just one post player. That back post is clear. U.S. so strong on that back post with target players like Lloyd. Rapino with that feathery control. Played at the University of Portland with the Seattle Reign. The Rue now stops on a dime, knocks it back. Lauren Holiday. And there's that big switch you talked about, Julian. That ball's hitting there with pace and gets to people quickly. Lloyd trying to get a good tackle there from Paulina Solis, and she has fouled it to be a free kick for Mexico. So Leo Cuellar, we're looking down at his bench right now, and they are very happy with the May Mexico so far is competing here 23 minutes in, Julian. Here's some of the defense for Mexico here, winning that with a strong tackle. Carly Lloyd, 176th appearance tonight, 51 goals for the U.S., 32 years of age, played her college soccer at Rutgers. Pengent for uh, game-winning goals uh, at the Olympics, too. Scored some big ones in her career, hasn't Whoa. she? And this will be interesting to see with this three in the middle, that triangle of Rapino High, Holiday playing deeper. Carly Lloyd's given the freedom to roam a bit. The only danger in that is if she's going forward a lot, you're leaving a lot of defensive responsibilities to Holiday in that deeper seam. And especially with the two outside backs for the United States going like they are and being so aggressive offensively. Are you leaving too much for Holiday to have to cover defensively? Because you really don't want her playing that much defense. Well, Vlatko Andonovsky did in the final, that's for sure, because she set both of the goals up to Amy Rodriguez beautifully. Uh, she was so exciting to watch in that NWSL final. Klingenberg, Rampone. Coverage of men's soccer continuing on ESPN October 10th, 640 Eastern. Landon Donovan taking the field for the final time as a member of the U.S. national team. That is an international friendly against Ecuador at Rentschler Field in East Hartford, Connecticut. The match is also live on Watch ESPN. Boy, where would U.S. soccer and Major League Soccer be without Landon Donovan? No question about that. Rampone. And there's Holiday. She's picked her head up now. Boy, that, the ability to hit that driven and wide ball and get it to people early just remains such a weapon. Pino left it. O'Hara's cross is blocked. There's some nice improvisation from Megan Rapino. Drop quickly off the turf, and Corral has done well to win it off Sauerburn and gets it switched. Mexico circulating the ball now. So Marjic will get called for the foul, the 19-year-old from Upland, California. He's played for the under-20 Mexican team, now in the full team under Leo Cuellar. Lloyd. Stepping up beautifully there was Ariana Romero to break that up, and it'll be a free kick for Mexico now. Still 1 0, 26th minute. And Mexico really unable 
to gain any possession here or any rhythm. I credit the United States for their immediate pressure. But Mexico has to do a better job of holding the ball if they want to get any momentum here. This one with the left foot that will skip in front of Hope Solo. And then clean handling from the goalkeeper out of the University of Washington. But Hope, not, uh, not someone to be a stranger to controversy. Uh, right now charged with two counts of misdemeanor domestic violence and has a trial in two months. So a lot going on there. Yeah, given the current climate, anything related to the topic is going to be seen in a different light right now. And I, and I hope for the team's sake that there's a, a quick resolution to all of this because one thing that our sport doesn't need is one of its most visible times and having a detraction from the game with the World Cup right around the corner. And most visible players. Here's Mexico. In and around the sideline there, that was Zamarczyk who got doubled up nicely by Klingenberg. And Heath, Heath is now flip-flopped again with Sidney LaRue. Klingenberg calls for the foul. Bianca Sierra to take it. Driven ball and getting up his ramp home. Well, you talk about center backs and just the positional nature of both Rampone and Becky Sauerbrunn. It, 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 it's perfect. And they complement each other so well. Here's a good look at Becky Sauerbrunn. She played in three matches at the 2012 London Olympics. Down from Mexico right now is Nayeli Rangel. Who has scored four international goals for Mexico. Jill Ellis now having a word with Lauren Holiday on the sideline. So here's what's happening in October for the United States. October 15th in Kansas City, Sporting Park, they'll take on Trinidad and Tobago. By the way, being coached by Houston Dash coach Randy Waldrum, who used to be the coach at Notre Dame. Then two days later, they go to Bridgeview, Illinois, take on Guatemala. And then October 20th is Haiti in the nation's capital at RFK Stadium. And Mexico. 2014, their CONCACAF Women's Championship. They'll take on the Ticos of Costa Rica on the 16th, Martinique on the 18th, and then October 21st, Jamaica in Washington, D.C. There's Ron Hell. Well, the good news for CONCACAF is Canada, as host nation, has already qualified. Two semifinal winners will qualify. The third place winner for, will qualify. And the fourth team in that tournament gets a half ticket and plays against Conmebol. So you potentially could have five CONCACAF teams at the Women's World Cup. A completely different scenario than what happened four years ago when the United States was the last team to qualify in the World Cup. Almost didn't make it due to the expanded field going from 16 teams to 24. And the fact that Canada is hosting, of course. Sauerbrunn, Holiday, Becky Sauerbrunn. Good to see Ron Hells back in the game. Full complement of 11 for Mexico. Here's Holiday, and this one a rare miss hit ball. Smart won it back. Mercado now. Liliano Mercado. You know, you see these little moments where the Mexican national team plays well in tight spaces and seems to be one pass away from it.
Lloyd put her body between the ball, earns the free kick. The U.S. will get it here. 32nd minute, a 1-0 lead. Remember at halftime they had scored four goals in Sandy in the 8-0 win. So Mexico hanging in there here tonight. Tobin Heath. Dominant night of ball possession as expected from the U.S. You can see the United States, when you look on the right side of your screen, they've got almost a five front with Klingenberg all the way on that front line. Sidney LaRue up there as well. Rodriguez, of course. And now Mexico settling back a little bit uh, deeper defensively. Julie posing the problem to the U.S. of trying to break them down. Ariana Romero off the throw. Ron Hell. It's a nice little give and go. Sauerbrunn to the rescue again. And a big switch here towards LaRue. Lloyd. Pressed very high there and Ron Hell closing her down very quickly here tonight. And I think overall, Jillian Ellis will be pleased because she said one of the things she wanted to see was that back line to midfield possession. Could they be cleaner this game? And in the past, in the games they've looked at over the year in which the United States have, has lost, that's been their area of difficulty in terms of possession. It's Klingenberg. Spirited effort in midfield from Mexico here, hunting the ball and trying to stem the U.S. attacks. Hope Solo tonight in her 155th appearance for the U.S. Sauerbrunn in her 64th. Rodriguez called for the foul on Ren Hell. So Mexico right now is breaking the rhythm of the U.S. a little bit here the last few minutes. And playing with a very physical style in that midfield. That's a bit disruptive for them. Yeah, we can hear it from their bench, which is right below us. They're constantly shouting at players to close people down. Uh, the staff of Mexico and Leo Cuellar. Long direct ball. That may be the ticket. Rodriguez, Santiago off her line will clear it. Good play by the Mexican goalkeeper. Klingenberg is foul. It'll be a free kick. Hey, coverage of Major League Soccer continuing Sunday, September 28th. The LA Galaxy hosting Bradley Wright Phillips and the New York Red Bulls on ESPN2. Major League Soccer presented by Five Hour Energy Sunday, September 28th at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Also live on Watch ESPN. League today unveiling the new logo. Did you like it? Yes, there's a lot of reaction to it. Anything that's reactive is good. Santiago will punch. It'll come right back to the top of the box. Rodriguez tries to get a shot off. It's blocked. <laughs> 20 years of Major League Soccer being celebrated with the new logo. Thirty-six minutes in here, it's stalled out a little bit. We're seeing Mexico defend a little deeper, get a little gamer in midfield here. How do they get a little bit more productive to get into this final third, Julie? Mexico or the, the United US, States? U.S. The U.S. 
Well, I think that they're, they're struggling in that final third with possession, just that final pass. We saw Santiago there off her line to clean up a nice ball. Can they have a little more, bit more possession in that final third, be a little bit more patient? There's LaRue, this one, a longer direct ball at bypass midfield. Here's Rodriguez now. Ball doesn't drop, it allows a tackle to come in. Free kick U.S. As Mercado called for the foul. It's the goal scorer. She's now got 28 for the U.S. This one driven to the back post, headed away. Rapino shot goes in. Took a deflection. Well, there's one way. Get a gratuitous clear and hit it first time. Rapino's 27th international goal. It's 2-0 United States. And Klingenberg ready for the quick restart. Already aware, and look at that nice ball in, because even if she doesn't hit her mark, that's a tough ball for Mexico to defend. And what a clean finish by Rapino there, and hitting it first time. Nice finish. How many players would have taken a touch maybe, brought it down thinking they had time, and been closed? We heard it up here. You could hear the contact. Megan Rapino had three goals at the London Olympics on the way to helping lead the United States to the gold medal. Rapino now. Going out wide, jumps to avoid the tackle, and it'll be a throw in U.S. Klingenberg, Klingenberg's been so active on this right side. Quick transition, picking the ball up, aware on that quick restart there with the throw in. I mean, those little things make a world of difference. Now she's been impressive tonight. Where do you see her in the pecking order? And we'll get back to that in a second. She's... I think that outside back position is, is pretty wide open. You've got Krieger, who isn't playing tonight because of a hamstring issue. But I think she's pretty solid, but you have a couple fighting for that spot, of course. O'Hara on the other side, Crystal Dunn, who's not in. And I think this is the exact situation that Jillian Ellis wants to look at. How do you respond in these moments? Rodriguez. And it'll be a goal kick, Mexico. U.S. are claiming it took a deflection. Second goal here from Rapino. Seeing the deflection. Comes off of Monica Alvarado, number three, but uh, good things happen when you hit volleys like that from Megan Rapino. And the NWSL final, we... we called uh, she brought Seattle back into it with a late goal hit through a maze of FC Kansas City players so marching there's Klingenberg again Sauerbrunn under pressure and she'll go back to the wonderful outlet of Hope Solo Forty-first minute, 2 U.S. Ninth minute, Rodriguez. Thirty-seventh minute, Rapino here in Rochester, New York. Glenn Davis alongside U.S. Women's Soccer Legend Julie Foudy here. Final preparation game for both of these teams at a CONCACAF World Cup qualifying next month. Zamarjic, driven ball, top of the box. Tobin Heath now for the U.S. Rapino wide open here on the right. Heath didn't see her. So talk about this midfield. Dissected a little bit in the middle, Julie, with Lauren Holiday, Carly Lloyd, and Rapino. I think I, I like it a lot in terms of Rapino playing in that higher position because I think she's so mobile. 
And anytime you can get Lauren Chaney the ball on offense, I think you're in good shape because of what she can do on the ball. I think the challenge will be how you fit Carly Lloyd into that equation because she's such a good finisher. She gives you so much offensively, but do you have the bite in that center of midfield defensively enough with those three playmaking types? Or does it cause you to shift that midfield role and make Carly Lloyd sit a little bit more so Rapino and, and Holiday can play that playmaking role? But Al lost it. Here's Rapino now breaking out. Plays away from pressure. Heath O'Hara joining in. They get it wide now to Sydney LaRue. Here's LaRue. Gets it to the back post. Rodriguez drives it across the face of goal. Nobody there and cleared by Mexico. Tanya Samarjic now. Very youthful Mexico squad. Veronica Perez, 49 caps, is the leader of this team. Certainly an experience. The steady Rampone has her head picked up. With the feet of Rapino, she turns. Goes right through to Heath. She's in one-on-one -on -one to make it three. And she does. What a finish from Tobin Heath. Picked her head up. Beat Santiago in goal. It's 3-0 the United States. Ninth and, international goal for Heath. And that's the challenge for any back line. There's so much mobility on that front line. Amy Rodriguez not making the trap, but it's okay because you have Tobin Heath, who's coming from usually that wide position, now from a central to wide position, coming across. And there's four or five players Mexico has to deal with on that front line. And that's exactly what Ellis wants to see from Heath. Can she produce for them in that position? What a nice finish by Tobin Heath. Two-time gold medalist from Morristown, New Jersey. Heath, the member of the Portland Thorns. So 3-0 United States, Rampone. There's so much interchange between LaRue, Heath, Rodriguez coming back into midfield at times, Rapino playing high. You're singing Klingenberg high. Makes it tough for back lines. And we're talking about a team that has on the bench again the likes of Abby Wambach, Alex Morgan, Heather O'Reilly, Kristen Press. The depth is pretty scary. What a great problem to have to to try and bring a roster of 28 like this down to 20. You call that a champagne party. The referee has added one minute of stoppage time to the first half. Ranhell runs it out of play. It'll be a throw in. Now, looking at this as we head into stoppage time here, you have to say for both of these teams, or do you have to say that? This is a great exercise from a competitive standpoint and some of the challenges tonight both teams are posing for each other. Well, I think for Mexico, I, I, I do find it interesting that having come off an 8-0 thumping just under a week ago that you wouldn't play a little bit more compact as we discussed off the top. LaRue hitting the back post is Rapino. Lloyd is in the middle. There's Lloyd tries to help it on. The post and back to Santiago. Gratuitously. Wonderful run from Lloyd, who hit the near post. And just trying to get a little flick on it. Doesn't even get anything on it because Santiago is frozen, thinking she is going to get it. Almost beats her on that back post. And with that final attack, 
the end of the first half for Carly Lloyd, who plays her soccer right here in Rochester for the Western New York Flash. Tobin Heath gets goal number three here. Julie, a couple of thoughts on the first half here. Well, I think if you're Mexico, you go in and say, okay, we played hard, we played tough, but we need to stay compact, right? Because you want to go into these qualifiers with some confidence as well. You don't want to come walking away with two big, big defeats going into that final round. Even though, as we pointed out, qualifiers are a different scenario. For the United States, I think a good half overall. Can you get even more productive in that final third with possession and opportunities? And we expect to see the likes of Abby Wambach and Alex Morgan potentially here in the second half. And joining us now is United States midfielder Megan Rapino. Megan, thank you very much for joining us here. Thanks for having me. We do appreciate it. All right, a couple of quick thoughts from you about the first half. Oh, I mean, good to get three goals. Good to get one in the first ten minutes. Uh, we want to come out strong, but I don't think that's good enough, is it? <laughs> Megan, how are you liking that attacking central midfield role? I like it. Um, I, I think that we've had a lot of per, our, a lot of our possessions sort of in the back, so it's been a little tough. Uh, I feel like I found it a little bit more when I went outside, but I think we need to stretch them more and open up that space in between uh, their midfield and their back line. But I like it. I mean, anywhere I can get the ball, I'm happy. Megan, appreciative of your time. Thank you very much, and best of luck in the second half. Thank you. That's Megan Rapino. Second goal tonight for her in the 37th. And then in the 44th, it was Tobin Heath. The U.S. 3-0 lead here in Rochester. Welcome back to Rochester, New York. The United States, a dominant uh, 
Three goal lead here in the first half. Rodriguez, Rapino, and Heath, the goal scorers. Glenn Davis alongside former U.S. midfielder Julie Foudy here and uh, enjoying this one here tonight. Now let's talk a little bit about Lauren Holiday because maybe a little bit of a differing role for her in midfield here tonight under the manager Jill Ellis. Yeah, playing a deeper seam. We see her, we've seen her in a professional team for Kansas City playing in that higher attacking center midfield role. But here she's playing deeper, and what she's doing is she is just spraying balls so well, switching the point of attack. And with that 40, 50-yard driven ball, you can see her just opening up the play. And what I love about it is that she can control the pace. She can slow it down. She can speed it up. She can serve in behind that back line. This one, she's trying to connect with her teammate on Kansas City, Amy Rodriguez. But Lauren Holiday, very active tonight for the United States. U.S. out shooting Mexico 6-1 here. Uh, you heard Megan Rapino though, too much possession at the back. Well, and, and that's going to be the challenge throughout this CONCACAF tournament as well, is how do you get in those scenes because it's going to get crowded? And how do you find Rapino in that higher seam in the number 10? But I think overall, the United States has to be pleased. Three goals, you're seeing a pressing Mexico team that's putting a lot of defensive pressure on them. If they can just get a little more productive in that final third. Yeah, talk a little bit about Mexico because there was a point here at the end of the first half where, you know, there was about a 15 to 17 minute stretch where, where they had a nice little wall in midfield and really were a, a little bit impenetrable. Right, and, and I think with the United States taking some risks. They're sending outside backs forward. They're being aggressive on offense. It's going to open up those chances. We saw Klingenberg get forward a lot, but what that does is it exposes that back line a little bit as well. It, it puts some pressure on the center backs for the United States. So Mexico could get one back and get back in this game. No question. All right, stay with us. When we come back, we'll speak a little bit about one of the all-time legends, Landon Donovan. Also, the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. We've got a winner. You probably know who it is.
Well, there's a good chance we might see that dynamic striker, Alex Morgan, warming up here in Rochester, the U.S. 3-0 lead here at halftime. Let's go back to Tuesday night, PPL Park, the site of the 101st U.S. Open Cup between Seattle and the Philadelphia Union. We take it to the 38th minute, this free kick. Christian Maidana, Marisa do with the finish, the Union up 1-0. Then in the 47th minute, a Seattle corner, Chad Barrett with this header would tie things up at one. It stays tied until the end of regulation, and then we go into extra time. Clint Dempsey off the pass from Martin, Sounders up two to one, and then in the second period, Obafemi Martins again, the final goal would earn the Seattle Sounders a three to one win and the Open Cup title. Well, congratulations to the Seattle Sounders. Landon Donovan and the United States national team will be taking on Ecuador. It'll be the send-off game for Landon Donovan. What an amazing career for the United States. Where would Major League Soccer be without the exploits of Landon Donovan in both Major League Soccer? The coverage October 10th, beginning at 6.40 Eastern time. And we welcome you back, Glenn Davis, along with Julie Thaddeus. We look at that footage there from Landon Donovan. What an outstanding career. Uh, where would where would the men's game in U.S. soccer be without Landon Donovan? I, I think he's obviously he's changed the game for um, for the men. I think in general, what he's done, and not just professionally as we've seen with MLS, but to do it at the international level and the professional level for as long as he did, and with the class that he did it, and to be not just great but but consistently great over the course of the years he's played and look at that 57 goals are all-time goals goal scoring leader all-time assist i mean he's he's been the benchmark and the standard for so long and so i love that u.s fans all over are going to be able to send him off the way it should be in style big congratulations to lana what an ambassador and, and face of the game he has been in this country for u.s soccer we'll take a break Abby Wambach might be somebody we see in the starting lineup in the second half. It's the United States, a 3-0 lead over Mexico.
It's a partnership feared by defenders around the world. Abby Wambach and Alex Morgan are back for the U.S. national team, and it couldn't have come at a better time. With qualifying on the horizon, having a healthy and productive strike tandem will be critical to the Stars and Stripes World Cup success. Tonight, these two are on display again as we start the second half in this international tune-up against Mexico. And as we walk you back to Rochester, New York, well, they're both on the field. Alex Morgan and Abby Wambach have been brought on here in the second half by the head coach, Jill Ellis. Abby Wambach, the all-time leading scorer in women's international soccer. 34 years of age, second half underway, Mexico in green, the United States in red. Romero to Mayor, quickly closed down there by O'Hara. It'll be a free kick, Mexico. So the dynamic now changes, Julie, with Wambach and Morgan on. Making four changes. Four changes, too. How about that? No question. You're going to see Morgan pushing that back line with her pace. Abby playing in a deeper role. She's playing in the... Mayor's shot will go off the mark. Goal kick. Playing in the seam that Megan Rapino was in, in that number 10 spot. So trying to bounce balls off her and, and see. Ellis wanted to see how she would do in that attacking center midfield role. Julie Johnston from Santa Clara played with the Chicago Red Stars also on in a uh, holding midfield role. Only her fourth cap tonight as you look at Abby Wambach. 14 years, 223 matches, 170 goals. She had a pair Saturday in Sandy, Utah in the 8-0 win. Heather O'Reilly also has come on for the United States. Talking about uh, a player with 207 caps and 41 goals at 29 years of age. A gold medalist. Fourteen gold medalists on the, this U.S. roster, and six players with over 100 caps, three including O'Reilly with over 200. So Lee's off the throw for Mexico. Veronica Perez. Johnston. Big moment, Julie. For Julie Johnston, and only her fourth appearance for the United States. And what a season she had with the Chicago Red Stars. Rookie of the year. We've seen what she can do at the youth national team level with the under-20s, winning that World Cup in 2012 with them. And a great holding center midfielder, also can play in the defensive role. Very versatile. Sauer Brum O'Hara back to Hope Solo. Fans on USA's third goal. And an assist has been added to number eight, Amy Rodriguez. Here's Corral. Tricky has uh, quite a change of direction. Brings in Mayor. Defended by Johnston. And it'll be a corner to Mexico here. Wambach coming back to help on the defensive side. Johnson denying the cross. Abby Wambach coming back from eye and knee injuries, getting healthy along with Alex Morgan at just the right time. Mexico off the corner. There's Wambach with a defensive header. Put back in by Mexico. Klingenberg was there. So was Solo. Quick distribution and good distribution from Solo to LaRue. Remarkably, only the second time 
LaRue, Morgan, and Abby Wambach have started together. Sorry, they've only started once together. They didn't start together <laughs> in this game. But when I saw that stat, I thought, oh my goodness, I did not know that. And you've got both LaRue and Morgan with that tremendous pace in and around Wambach. And how Wambach fits in with this deeper seam will be interesting to see because we're so used to seeing Morgan and, and Wambach playing side by side. Is her role really changing as much as everybody's saying it is? I mean, there's articles coming out now that she's going to be coming deeper like this and being a dis distributor like this to the, to the wide flank play and pace of the likes of LaRue and Morgan. Well, I think Ellis is looking at the potential for that with all these different switches, with Holiday playing deeper, with Rapino playing in that seam, trying to find where she can fit these pieces in the puzzle. And with Abby's age and injuries, she's getting into her mid-30s. Can she play in that holding, sorry, in that attacking center midfield role? Wow, what a play from Klingenberg. He spun out of there. Here's Morgan. Morgan's cross to the back post, the volley! Miss hit by O'Reilly. Mexico's got a bit of space here, but... <coughs> Veronica Perez to Ron Hell. Ron Hell plays it wide now. Put then cross, Hope Solo alertly off her line. Heather O'Reilly. A little touch out of pressure from Mayor. Here's Mayor again now. Klingenberg tucking in beautifully there to cut that cross out. Lloyd plays into Morgan. U.S. seemingly still uh, getting adjusted here to some of these changes in the second half. Only a few minutes in. I mean, that's the challenge as well when a coach wants to see players and you're making a lot of changes, substitutions, you lose your rhythm a bit. International friendly, so the teams afforded more substitutions. That's why the U.S. could bring four players on at halftime. Here's LaRue now. LaRue's cross. Second ball. It's Wamba over the top. They would have loved it here in Rochester. Fell to her at the 18 after the cross from LaRue. And this is the pace at which the United States breaks. You can see as me immediately when they win that ball. Abby in the middle of your screen. She is waiting for that second ball to come and in the perfect position to try and get this on frame. But getting numbers forward immediately off the break, that's been another key for the United States. When they regain possession, how dangerous can they be and how quickly? Corral brings it down, Mayor. Klingenberg again having a very sound game in the right back position. And Johnston is fouled. It'll be a free kick for the U.S. here. 54 minutes in. Some hesitation, but Rampone is going to get there. Of course, on an artificial surface here tonight, that's what it's going to be in Canada. It's a bad pass. It's an empty net and a chance for Mexico to score a goal. They hesitate. She doesn't hit it first time. What a chance for Veronica Perez, of all people. It allows Sauerbrunn back in to block her finish.
A self-inflicted mistake at the back from the U.S. And by taking a touch, Perez allowed Sauerbrunn to get back in the play. Rampone now. So a couple of nervy moments here for the United States. Mexico had an opportunity to make it a 3-1 game. LaRue wins it towards Wamba. Sweeping tackle. Second ball is picked up by Johnson. Nice early ball to Morgan. He's got running from O'Reilly, looks her off, hits Sabi Wambach on the right side, is pulled out. The U.S. Furious run to get people in front of the ball. And it'll be a handball on Alex Morgan. And a free kick to Mexico. Going back to this play earlier. Hope. Oh just miss clearing it completely you can see Sauerbrunn recovering for her and what a nice recovery by Sauerbrunn but Perez has got to finish that you have an open goal a chance to get back in the game have to be quicker than that taking that touch setting up gives Sauerbrunn too much time to get back in the play and you could see Hope Solo put her hands on her head she was slow to get back to goal Tackle from Wambach here on uh, number seven, Nayelit Ranhel. Mexico's going to make a sub here. Solo just going over thanking Sauerbrunn for the recovery <laughs> with a big grin on her face. Kenty Robles, come on, started against the U.S. in Sandy, Utah. And off will come Liliana Mercado. Best Mexican chance coming off Charity. Solis blocked by Morgan. And then of course, U.S. fans, Jill Ellis certainly happy to see Morgan and Wambach getting on the same page in that 8-0 win over Mexico. And both of them have had their issues with health and injury in the past year. Morgan being out seven months took her to get back from that stress reaction she had in her ankle and her foot. Seven months, June was her first game. She's only played and this is her fifth game this year for the United States. Corral now. It'll be a free kick for Mexico. <laughs> Kelly O'Hara. Plays for Sky Blue in the NWSL. 47th appearance for her tonight. Over the top, goal kick U.S. Alex Morgan getting the start here in the second half. Let's go back to last Saturday. And what a nice one this is. A mistake on the back line for Mexico. Morgan there to finish it off nicely over the keeper and then with that near post run just slotting it and that was the last piece of the puzzle for her coming back from injury was finishing and you can see how productive she has been in her career but when you're gone seven months trying to regain fitness I couldn't believe how fast her pace was immediately coming back and that was the last thing we saw with the Portland Thorns is just in front of goal and you can see the sharpness is back just in time. Now let's not forget, it was only back in 2010, in March of 2010, that she debuted for the United States. And it was against Mexico. Sauerbrunn goes back to Hope Solo. Here's Morgan, and she's allowed to turn. With the outside of her foot, gets it out wide, O'Reilly now. 
looking for some support. Justin. Got caught in possession here. Perez plays the right ball to Corral. And Corral now has brought in the substitute Robles. Robles has got space, has got her head up for Mexico, drives across it. The far post, and it's handled. It'll be a free kick. Boy, it was a great opportunity for Mexico. He found a player wide open at the far post. Samarczyk. Megan Klingenberg uh, seems like a good night right back for her, Julie. Yeah, it looks like she's going to be coming off right now. And here's what we saw out of her. Shutting down defensively, keeping the ball offensively. And then part of this goal where she serves it in, Rapino gets the rebound, puts it away. I think it was a good night overall for her. She was aggressive offensively. She kept the ball. She got caught a couple times because she was so aggressive offensively. Coming on, Crystal Dunn of the Washington Spirit was a member of that under-20 U.S. World Cup winning team. 12th cap, won an NCAA title at North Carolina. Was an attacking player in college. And is being groomed in the right-back position for the United States. And here's Dunn. Wambach. Big switch. That's a beautiful ball over the top. LaRue. LaRue on her right foot. Tried to switch the play, took a deflection, and Dunn's not going to get there. Should be a corner for the United States. Box loaded up for the U.S. Obviously, Abby Wambach is a huge target and penalty area predator. LaRue in and around the near post. Towards a penalty spot, Johnston goes up. O'Hara to Rampone. Crystal Dunn. We watched her uh, working on her delivery from the right back position in training yesterday. Wambach. Alvarado steps up. Sixty-third minute, three-zero U.S. lead. Dunn, Johnston, Carly Lloyd. Lloyd slips a ball in. Offside flag is up. A coverage of men's soccer continues on ESPN. October 10th, 6.40 Eastern. Landon Donovan taking the field for the final time as a member of the U.S. national team. It's an international friendly against Ecuador. Rentschler Field in East Hartford, Connecticut. Match is also live on Watch ESPN. And a great night to honor the legendary Landon Donovan playing with the U.S. for the final time against Ecuador. That was a look at another legend. They're all over the place. There's one next to me up here in this booth. My mom's been in your ear, I see, Glenn. I'm just, I'm just watching Abby in that attacking center midfield role, and I, I can't get used to it yet, Glenn. I'm not sold on it yet. I think if you have someone as dangerous as she is in front of goal, why not put her right in front of goal? I don't want her in my midfield playmaking. Talk about your initial time playing with her when she came into the national team. Feisty, just like you, you, you know, you, you see now. You knew she was a player who would run through walls, multiple brick walls for you. You kill to have those kind of teammates. Just knocked it down off her chest here. O'Hara, Sauerbrunn. You know, but the, the story a lot of people don't 
remember about Abby is she got cut a few times before she even made that team. Was having some fitness issues, wasn't as fit as she needed to be. April Heinrichs told her she needed to get more fit if she wanted to make the team, and she did just that. So looking at that time to now, from a technical standpoint, where has her evolution come? Well, I think she played with so much raw force and talent when she was younger, and then the sophistication over the years of being a finisher with not just the power and the physical presence, but then the savvy and the mentality of, I'm going to strap this team on my back, on my shoulders, every single one of them, and lead them. How many big games and big goals has she scored over the years? She's got a huge desire to win the World Cup. The United States have not won it since your time in 1999. And she's never won it. You look at that resume. That's the missing of piece. All the success, yeah. She and she talks about it a lot. The hunger of, and the elusiveness of that World Cup. Here's Morgan. He gets it wide. O'Reilly. Whips in the cross, Wambach in the place she loves to be in and around that six. Can't steer the header on target. More changes coming for both teams. And Wambach just poaching right in there, knows if she can pop out and get something out of it. But going away from goal, even for someone as talented as she is in the air, that's a hard one to try and bring back. Teresa Noyola comes on. Samarczyk off for Mexico. Making their final change. And another young talent, Christian Press. Coming on of the Chicago Red Stars. Played at Stanford Press. Tonight gets her 27th appearance for the U.S. They go along with 13 goals. Noyola from Mexico coming on for 24th time representing the national team. Also plays in the NWSL again with the Houston Dash. So a lot of uh, connection to the NWSL here tonight. Mayor was the target. Paulina Solis seemingly cramping up here for Mexico. Here's how we got to 3-0 in this one here tonight. First off, the ninth minute, Rodriguez would get things started, Julie, and then, well, you get this finish here. And then Rapino, the provider, turns finisher on that one, gets a good deflection, but what a nice hit she did there with her left foot. Struck it very well. Playing again in that attacking central midfield seam and finding Heath. So Rapino, part of all three of those goals in that attacking central midfield. And Heath with a nice finish to make it three for the United States. Veronica Perez stepped up. Press. Good vision from Press to pick out Carly Lloyd. Lloyd. Morgan with a great first touch, and the offside flag is up. It was the first touch that was going to make Alex Morgan a favorite to get the shot off. And Alex Morgan looking like she's... Stepping along that line, she was aware of it. Looked even to me. But in the first bit of this second half, just seems like the United States struggling a little bit to find its rhythm again. And that could be a consequence of so many changes out there. Two of your best playmakers now sitting on the bench in Rapino and 
and Holiday. Lombok again coming deeper, plays it wide, gets into the middle. Johnston, Wambach back to Johnston. O'Hara. Is one of the strengths of Jill Ellis as a coach for the U.S. her ability to define the roles of these players? Um, yes, I think so. And, and I think she's... She's done a very good job of saying, here's what I want from you, one, right, in this role, and two, these are the goals we're going to set collectively and individually. For example, she said, we are, we are finishing two out of every 10 shots. That's 20%. I think we could raise that up another 10% there. And so as a goal for the team, they're trying to get to 30% efficiency in front of goal because she thinks you have to be able to convert, which is true, to win world championship titles. You have to convert 12 yards in. So that's what they've been tracking. Mexico caught high here. Press is going to get there. Lloyd is at the back post. Morgan's in there as well. The cross cut out. Huge play from Mariana Romero because the U.S. had three players hitting the penalty area. Nice ball over the top. You can see Press wide open, just asking for it. The danger of Mexico keeping that line a little bit high. And Press looking, but really needs to be better finding a seam with so much time on the ball there to finish this game off. Short one. Morgan. Hera to Rampone. Rampone, again, 39 years of age tonight in her 297th game. Going the full 90 minutes right now. Here's Morgan, won it back. Morgan shut it wide. Might have been close to kind of a carbon copy of the goal she scored in Sandy, Utah with the pressing play, but that ability to close people down leads to immediate chances for her. And Morgan just preys on these backs, not clearing it. She comes, she cleans, so opportunistic, and all she needs is a half chance. And unlucky not to get this one on frame, just wide. But she hovers around there. We saw her do it in the first game against Mexico. A ball that was bouncing in, that, in her first goal against Mexico. Look at those numbers, Julie. 48 goals and 75 appearances. Has she, in a way, uh, redefined U.S. soccer a little bit with her emergence in 2010? I think her emergence in 2010 is the reason Abby Wombach has 170 goals. I never thought anyone would come close to touching Mia Hamm's record of 158. When Abby was at 100, she had just broken her leg. Here's Lloyd now with youth space. We'll get back to that in a minute. She's gotten it wide now. O'Reilly whips it in near post. It's Lloyd. Shot is blocked. Once again, Monica Alvarado getting in front of a U.S. shot here tonight. Carly Lloyd making that run to the near post. U.S. holding it here at the back a bit. Trying to tempt Mexico out. And this is where it generally stalls for Mexico because they just don't have a threat behind the U.S. No, but the good news for Mexico is they're getting number eight back, Teresa Noyola. She's been injured for a lot of the season, plays for Houston Dash with the NWSL. Great little playmaker. And by the way, Mexico's former Stanford Cardinal, by the way, Glenn. I knew you were going to drop that in. A lot of Stanford influence out here tonight. And over the top, this will go all the way back to the goalkeeper. So we've been speaking about Alex Morgan 
and Abbe Wambach's relationship. Take a look at this analytic. Morgan and Christine Lilly, who is now an assistant at the University of Texas under Angela Kelly. Yeah, look but at that. 15 assists, Alex Morgan on Wambach goals. Rapino in there active with 10. And, and not only the assist, but Morgan draws so much attention and draws in defenders, so it opened up finally a little space for Wambach. Salbron got a hand on it. Johnston. And by the way, Mexico is one of the favorites to get to the World Cup out of CONCACAF. Let's not forget that. Done. Lloyd. Mexico's overcommitted. They're going to go direct. It's Morgan, and that's the option you get with her. It's going to drop nice. It's a good touch. Got stuck under her feet, and Santiago will pounce on it. Look, the favorite to get the shot off, and then it went awry. You can see she's disappointed with that. But Mexico, again, if you're not getting pressure on the ball, playing a high line like that is dangerous when you have the pace of a player of Alex Morgan. She just isn't able to clean it up, knows she could have done better with that one. But eventually she's going to get her chance. Wambach. Great ball to Morgan, who's got her head up, squares it back. It's Chris. Right-footed shot, saves Santiago. Rebound is cleared by Mexico. Press set herself up beautifully after the pass from Morgan. So a trio there. Wambach to Morgan, Morgan to Press. Good moment there, Mayor wanted that behind the U.S. defense. Here's Wambach. Morgan to Press. Press saying uh, she spent some time playing in Sweden. She sort of rediscovered her love for the team game and talked about how going to Sweden was a big piece into sort of rekindling her fire. It had so much success over there. Had so much success collegiately at Stanford and then replicated that in Sweden as well. Lloyd can't steer the cross in front of goal. Coverage of Major League Soccer continuing Sunday, September 28th. The LA Galaxy taking on leading goal scorer Bradley Wright Phillips and the New York Red Bulls on ESPN2. Major League Soccer presented by Five Hour Energy Sunday, September 28th at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Also live on Watch ESPN. Right here in Rochester, New York, Glenn Davis alongside Julie Fowley. 78th minute, the U.S. a 3-0 lead over Mexico. Final preparation game next month. World Cup qualifying begins. For Canada 2015 in the CONCACAF region. Second half substitute, Julie Johnston. The U.S. is going to face in all their games deeper defending teams in CONCACAF World Cup qualifying. Get back to that in a second. Looked into the box, the header, and it's spot on. A tremendous goal from Alex Morgan via the aerial game. It was only a matter of time where Morgan was going to get this one in the back of the net and doing a beautiful job of heading it back where it came from. But look at the number of red jerseys open on that back post. If it wasn't Morgan, it was Presser Wombach behind her. And Mexico just not tight enough in that final third. 
with so many weapons for the United States. They are flooding numbers on that back line. 49th international goal, Heather O'Reilly with the delivery. Great service in by O'Reilly to recognize that back post wide open. Everyone had shifted. And that's really the beauty of this 4-2-3-1 system, if you can play it right, is you get so many players coming forward out of midfield that players just don't want to track. Mexico manager Leo Cuero was quoted a couple years ago saying, every time we play the U.S., it will be a great test to evaluate our work, our players, and our attitude. And then he went on to say in the, the quote that, we're fortunate to be in this region with the world's number one team because there's so much for us to take from being in games like this. You're playing against one of the best in the world, if not the best in the world so consistently. Mexico loading the box up here, a chance to maybe pick a goal off. Bodies strewn everywhere in the penalty area. Let's go back to the last goal from Alex Morgan. Heather O'Reilly picks her head up, perfectly paced ball. And Morgan just puts it right back where it came from. Keepers shifting, clinical that one. That ball had eyes for the goal. Great snapped header from Alex Morgan. Played her college soccer at Cal. Only began playing the game of soccer at 13 years of age. It's a good reminder for the parents out there who panic when their kid at 12 <laughs> is not playing well enough. The kid's not scoring enough. How old is she? Five. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm going to be one of those parents, Glenn. That's what I'm worried about. I heard there were some games you were chatting on the sideline <laughs> a little bit. Morgan is wreaking havoc and finding her way in this game even more. Cross is blocked. It'll be a corner U.S. And once again, it was Heather O'Reilly. O'Reilly's getting a lot of the ball out on the right side here. So much depth for the United States. What a wonderful problem to have for Jill Ellis and her staff when they choose and narrow it down to that final 20, which she said she's going to do after this game. 28 to 20. Bombach the target. Smart by Ron Hell. Let's talk about Abby Wambach. The World Cup in Canada. If it and it will be on an artificial surface. Is there some concerns there? Short tournament for her, 34 years of age, has had some injury problems on the artificial surface, durability in that tournament. And, and where does Amy Rodriguez maybe come in? Well, I think there's concerns for any player. The, the turf definitely takes a toll on your body differently, as you know, Glenn, as a, as a former player, than, than the real surface. There's Wambach distributing again, and she's floated a good ball out wide here. Press 
We'll get back to that in a second. Press, change of direction, shot over the top. Was trying to pick out that upper corner, but has been cutting back effectively on her right foot. And Press really active up front. You can see a play earlier. I'm going to circle her here. She makes a run to the near post, and this is the beauty of the near post run because watch how she takes that whole defensive line. Romero goes with her, and if the service had come across, you can see Morgan on that back post wide open, and all she needs is a little bit of a window to try and get something there. We've seen how dangerous and effective and efficient she can be in front of goal. Rampone now. It could be a subtle moment tonight in this game. That's the difference in making a roster for some of those that are on the bubble. It's a question we put to Jill Ellis, and she said absolutely. People are being judged by what they do in this game. It's part evaluation, part preparation. And output. You know, how how many opportunities are you creating for the team? Boy, U.S. Uh, now beginning to flow and find a little bit more rhythm here. Took a little while to rev their engines here in the second half. Johnson looking for that international goal. ESPN FC, the place for comprehensive coverage on soccer news from around the world. Get the latest analysis and stats from your favorite teams and players. ESPN FC, weekdays at 6 Eastern on ESPN News. Also live on Watch ESPN. I tune into that a lot. <laughs> I love it. Good cast of characters on that show. Eighty seventh minute. Another change for Mexico. Luz Duarte will come on. And off will go Charlene Corral. Making their third change, Mexico substitution. In the eighty seventh minute, leaving the game, number twenty, Charlene Corral. Entering the game, number nineteen, Luz Duarte. I think if you're Jillian Ellis and her staff watching, you're pleased with how many opportunities you've created. And a lot of it's come because of the energy of number 13, Alex Morgan here. Heather O'Reilly, Kristen Press have all made a difference here in the second half. Uh, Press still carrying it along the 18, and Crystal Dunn can't control it. I think for the United States, getting through CONCACAF qualifiers. Of course, they're gonna be focused on it. Of course, they're gonna respect every team they come across, but it's a bit of a formality with the expanded pool. The question they're gonna start looking at and the challenges they're gonna start having to bring to the table are, how do you make sure you're 250 days away from that World Cup starting, less than a year, that you can be not just consistent, but consistently great. So when opportunities arrive in that 12-yard box, you're finishing. Jill Ellis and staff, and it's the longest time uh, she's been able to spend to this team since taking the job over from Tom Sermani. And there's a rip ball from the top of the box from Carly Lloyd. That was tagged from about 30 yards out. Had a bit of movement in it, and a good save from Cecilia Santiago who helps it over the crossbar. And how many weapons do the United States have in terms of offensive power? Carly Lloyd from outside, Press from inside, Wombach, Morgan. This is the strength of the U.S. team is they have so many options and with such flexibility. U.S. off the court towards the near post. Mayor got there, Sauerbrunn, and was caught in an offside position. But Carly Lloyd reminding us of the value of shooting out of midfield. And that was it with tremendous power. It's 
Seven career goals against Mexico. Five goals, four assists in 2014. Has played more minutes than any U.S. player this year. Coming into this game, 1,143. And Wambach called for the foul. Lloyd. Bit of a scissored run here from Wambach, who cut across the front of her. Still Lloyd. The back heel towards Wambach. If she had a player to her right, she could have brought in Kristen Press. <laughs> I thought Press was going to say something to her, but she, <laughs> she kindly jogged back. <laughs> That's what happens when you're one of the younger players. You saw her look at her. United States off the corner here. In stoppage time, two minutes of additional time. Goes to the back post. Wambach gets up, tries to steer the header in, but easily handled by Santiago. will expect to face a number of teams that will likely defend deep against them in qualifying. Trinidad and Tobago, Guatemala, Haiti. O'Reilly took a deflection at the near post, headed away by Mexico. The U.S. seeing this one out here, a 4-0 lead. Including their final preparation game. Head of qualifying. Coming on for Mexico now, number 14, Christina Murillo. And out will come Nayeli Ron Hell. And my apologies, it was Veronica Perez who came out. Santiago. Morgan has brought it down, dancing on it in the penalty area, swings it to the far post, here's Press, and over the top. So much time and space in midfield for the United States to just have their way, pick out players. Julie Johnson there, no player within 10 yards of her. He's made an impression in the second half, Alex Morgan. Getting the fourth U.S. goal in the 79th minute, but her movement, mobility, has made a difference. And that does it. 4-0 for the United States here. Rodriguez, Rapino, Heath, and Morgan. 4-0 winners. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We'll wrap it up in Rochester.
And welcome back, everybody. Alex Morgan making an appearance here in the second half. The U.S. 4-0 winners today getting goals from Rodriguez, Rapino, Keith, and Morgan. 4-0 winners over Mexico. MLS coverage continuing Sunday to September 28th. L.A. taking on the Red Bulls, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Up next, ESPN2, Geico ESPN High School Showcase. Lubbock Cooper versus Texas Stephenville. For Julie Fowdy, I'm Glenn Davis. The final score in Rochester, the U.S. 4, Mexico 0.